The control box is finally done. I will now show it to you before I install it. Here are the bulk converters that I was talking about before. These are for reducing the voltage to be used by some parts of the printer. These are the voltages I set them at. The top one is 12 volt for the Corsair fans on the control box. The second one is 5 volts for the Noctua hotend fan. The third one is a 3.3 volt rail. The purpose of this voltage is to allow the Raspberry Pi to sense if the power supply is on or off. This is used by the PSU control plugin in Octoprint which allows control of my relay board to turn the printer on and off. I might do a video about this to explain it more in more detail and allow other people to use it as a guide in the future. And the last buck converter is another 5 volt rail for the layer fan. It has to be a separate rail because the hot end fan always runs at a fixed speed while the layer fan is sometimes off and also needs speed control. As you can see I did some cable management and everything is mounted where I said I would mount them. This is the plug for the Raspberry Pi since I want the Raspberry Pi to run even when the rest of the printer is off. That's why I, I have PSU control on my OptoPrint install. I haven't connected this yet, but this is a for a LED strip mounted on the printer. Here are all the cables that I need to connect. I drilled a hole to pass through the cables for the printer to the control box. Now all I have to do is connect these and test the control box. But before that I will finish the top cover of the box. Here is the top cover of the box and here it is painted. It just sits on top of the box to allow easy access. I might also use some hinges to mount it better in the future. I have now connected everything and now I'm doing a test print to see if everything is fine. Spoiler alert, it's not. But so far it looks good. As you can see the printer is printing normally. It's just a 20 by 20 test cube. Here is the control box, I had to raise it a bit because otherwise the cables were a bit too short. If you look at the screen you will see the temperatures are looking good. I haven't connected these yet. The camera I will start working on now. The screens will be at a later video. Now let's wait and see the printer printed cube. And here it is looking good. So you might ask why if the printed cu cube is looking good, why did I say everything is not fine? Well, I started working on a mount for the camera. Here it is sliced. But I noticed that my print looks horrible. As you can see if you look closely, I couldn't get a bit better picture since the only camera I have is my phone camera. The problem with this print it was it is missing in height so it looks like some missed Z steps so it's an easy fix. I in increased the voltage on my Z drivers from 0.8 to 1.25 volts at 0.1 volt at a time until the problem with this print is fixed. I hope that would be the end of the problems, but Murphy's Law exists and so I had to deal with another bunch of problems. First of all, my Raspberry Pi started to not boot for some reason. It took me two days to figure out a temporary solution to that. I still haven't figured out what the problem is. For now I can get it to boot most of the time. But that that's not all. I printed the second batch of the same file, as you can see, and while the Z-Steps problem is gone, 
there is another problem and it looks horrible again. It is also very weak and breaks very easily. I initially thought this is just under extrusion and tried upping the E-steps. That didn't solve it. It extrudes almost the same amount every time even if I increase the E-steps. After playing it for a few hours I came to the conclusion that my stepper motor in the extruder is faulty. This happened to me before too and I had to fix it which obviously didn't last long. So I'm not going to fix that motor again, I'm going to replace it or just get a new extruder. I'm considering both options but until I order new parts and receive them, which might take a few weeks since I will have to order them internationally, I can't do anything more on my printer. So sorry for not being able to do much in this video. Before I end the video I want to show you some of the things that I have coming in this work log, including adding a camera to shoot time lapses and also being able to monitor the printer remotely. Replacing the smooth idlers with toothed idlers. Replacing the stock belt with on the X and Y axis with steel core belts. Adding a filament sensor and possibly changing the Z axis mechanism to use two motors to reduce the load on the single motor which right now gets really hot. But by the way, before anyone asks, this motor cannot be used for extruder since it's not geared, so I cannot use this motor as a replacement for my broken extruder motor. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it below. Thanks for watching.